Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to my studio. This is Paint with Love Joy. Thanks so much for joining me today. If this is your first time here, please hit the subscribe button and check out my other videos on the channel. If this is your third or fourth video that you've checked out, thanks so much for your support and I'm really glad you're getting creative at home. Uh, really proud of you for doing that as well. So in this video, this is going to be geared towards my beginner painters. Um, so those of you that just want to keep getting comfortable with painting, maybe explore some new subjects, explore more blending and some of the basics, um, these are good videos for you to utilize. With that being said, you have full permission to change out any colors or change anything about the video or about the painting process. Um, that's the great part about creativity. You get to kind of make it your own. So what you're going to see in the description box below is what I call a link to a supply kit. And in that supply kit are the basic supplies that you need to paint at home. So use what you have at home, but if you need to grab some new stuff or you like what I'm using in the video, you can use that link um, just kind of as a guide for what you'll get there. Another thing that you're gonna see is something that I call a traceable, and there's a link in the description box below for that as well. And a traceable is a way for my first time and beginner painters to get the initial composition on the canvas before you even start painting. And there is also gonna be a link for a video on how to transfer your traceable. So check out both of those um, and get your initial composition on the canvas and then jump into the process of painting. When you're ready to kind of take your skills to the next level, check out my online school, paintwithlovejoy.com. And I've got a few um, advanced beginners, some intermediate classes on there, and my signature paint your pet classes on there, as well as my intro to palette knife scraping. Both, you will learn a lot, and you'll learn some core foundational art skills in both of those courses. So please keep evolving your skills, keep painting, keep getting creative. Try to find a monthly outlet for yourself. I recommend that for everyone. All right, so I think that's enough talking right now. Let's go ahead and jump into the process of painting. All right, guys, this is gonna be another fun painting. So grab your supplies, transfer your traceable to your surface, and as always, make sure you take your progress photos. Now, what you'll see on my screen is I went over my traceable lines with a black Sharpie marker for those of you at home that are gonna pause the video and draw what you see. If you're using the traceable, you do not have to do the Sharpie markers. And you do have full permission to switch out colors on this if you feel like it. So we are starting with a light yellow next to um, our design and that is white plus yellow and then we'll use a little bit more of the direct yellow as we get out towards the edges of the canvas. Now this uh, painting Rosie the Riveter uh, was a viewer request and part of the inspiring human inspiring women series that I'm doing. Uh, but like I said earlier feel free to change colors on this make it your own change the message um, anything that you want to do to make this unique to you. And I do like that this painting is basically our primary colors, um, red, yellow, and blue, um, with a little bit of the raw sienna when we get into the skin tone, but I like the simplicity of the colors in this one. So I am using student grade paint and applying the paint a little bit thicker, um, just so that way it has a bit more opaque coverage. And now moving into that direct yellow as I get to the edges of the canvas. And if you happen to be painting on a stretched canvas, I do recommend that you carry that color around the sides of the canvas um, while you have the color on your brush. And it looks nice when you hang it on the wall, having that color wrap around the edge. Now, if you are holding your breath, take a deep breath, relax. Um, I'm proud of you for painting. And the more that you paint, the more comfortable you get with the process. All right, so a good place to pause the video and take your progress photo. We're gonna be moving into shades of light blue as we fill in um, her shirt, and then more of the direct blue as we fill in the um, kind of conversation bubble above her head. So that light blue was white with a touch of blue, a little bit of blue will go a long way. And I tend to stick with the same brush, but if you need to move down to that pointy brush, go right ahead and do that. 
Also, if you want to let your background dry before you move into this uh, section, you can do that. Um, or you can just jump right into painting. So here you can see where I added just a touch more blue to it, um, going just a touch darker. And as you follow along the video, I want you to utilize your power of observation. That is actually something that you're strengthening each time that you paint. Observe the place where you see me put something, the shape, and then mimic that to the best of your ability on your canvas. So we are moving into more of a medium blue, so just adding a touch more blue to the light blue you were using. And we're gonna be filling in that bottom section and then the rolled up little cuffs. Then we'll be moving in with a darker, uh, more of that direct blue. And again, feel free to switch back and forth between the medium flat brush and your small pointy brush. Now by applying that paint a little bit thicker, it makes it a little bit easier to blend. Um, but if you happen to have kind of thin paint or it's on the fast drying side, just kind of take this in little sections. Now, if you want, you can pull up the original uh, poster, the original icon for this, and anything that you see in that that maybe I don't add because I have simplified this for my beginner students, feel free to add what you see on the original. Because again, that um, is strengthening your power of observation. So here we have the pointy brush and I'm grabbing that direct blue paint and I'm basically placing it where I want it. Then I'm going to wipe the brush off and with light pressure, we're going to um, blend that into the base color. Now, as we do the blending, um, I do want you to kind of keep light pressure and you're just developing um, the skills and the muscle memory and even the observation of what it feels like to blend paint. And this is called wet on wet blending. So as you're watching this, just kind of notice the direction that I kind of pull the paint into and mimic that to the best of your ability on your canvas. If it happens to be different than what I end up doing, totally okay. Um, I'm of the belief that it's more important to just paint. Um, your final outcome, as awesome as you may want it to be, it's gonna grow and you're learning a lot right now. So you could paint this same image um, in a year from now, in a couple months from now, and it will be different than what you paint today. Um, and that's just part of the painting process. All right, so still adding that blue. And as you're working with the pointy brush, kind of play with the pressure. Light pressure with the brush will create a bit of a skinnier line. More pressure will create a bit of a wider line. And if you have varied widths of lines um, on your painting, that's okay. That's where you're at for today. So we are going to clean that brush off. We're going to grab that white, put the highlights on there. We're not going to blend this as much um, as we did with the blue. And again, just kind of observe the general place that I put each of these um, sections of white. There we go. And again, remember to breathe. If your brush is shaky, that means you're holding your breath. So if you exhale as you touch the brush to the canvas, um, that makes it a little bit easier for you. All right. So now going back up to the middle flat brush, that direct blue paint, we're gonna fill in that whole conversation bubble um, just with that solid blue. And I am using student grade paint. So you'll see in a few places where I apply it thicker, it's got a bit more opaque coverage compared to the places where it might be thinner and some of the white of the canvas is shining through. So with student grade paint, you've got a few options. You can apply it a little bit thicker or apply two coats. So let it dry and apply a second layer. Totally your call. Um, and like I said earlier, if you wanna switch out the message at the end of the video, um, I'll stick with what was on the poster, um, but please put your own positive personal message in there. Um, and you can even make it unique if you're giving it as a gift. You can put somebody's name up there. But basically, I'm just proud of you for getting creative, for painting at home, for stepping out of your comfort zone, and um, just kind of escaping the world for a little bit while you paint. You'll be so focused on the canvas um, that you do forget about the rest of the world for a little bit. And that's why quite a few of my students paint and it's definitely why I paint. All right, so we're gonna go back to that small pointy brush, the uh, straight red paint, and we're gonna fill in the bandana on Rosie's head. And same thing with this. If you apply it a little thicker, you got a bit more opaque coverage or you can do two uh, layers of it if you need to. 
Again, remember to breathe as you are touching the brush to the canvas and that will alleviate some of the shakiness that you might have with your hand. You guys are doing a great job. Again, really proud of you for painting at home. Um, and I do appreciate the viewer request. This was a viewer request. So if you've got something that you would like me to do, um, leave a comment or send an email. I am a solo production, so I don't get to the viewer request as quickly as I'm sure you would like me to. Um, but I do keep a production list going and um, just kind of work off of that as I make each video. All right, so we're moving into the skin tone and I'm using white with a touch of raw sienna. You are more than welcome to um, change the skin tone, make it whatever you want. And we're going to kind of take it section by section. We'll do the arms and then those fingers and then the face. Um, but we're going to reiterate uh, kind of the same type of blending that we did in the, uh, the shirt. So we're putting our base color. Then we're going to put a bit of a darker color. And then we're going to put a white highlight on there. And we're getting into the basis of what we call the value scale. Having three shades, just like on the shirt, the light blue, the medium blue, and the dark blue. This is what creates that kind of magical illusion of a 3D object on a flat surface. So here I did grab the small pointy brush and the direct raw sienna, and we're gonna place it in a few specific places, and then we're gonna go back and blend it into that base color. So again, just observe where you see me place each of these colors, and then the kind of the direction that I'll blend into. Again, strengthening that power of observation and just enhancing your creative skills. And as we do this painting, um, every now and then I do want you to pause the video, take your progress photo, but also prop your painting up and look at it from a distance of uh, five to 10 feet away. And when you look at it from that distance, this um, shading that we're doing makes even more sense. And Kind of the nice joke is everything looks better from a distance. So don't be upset if you like it more from five feet away compared to two feet in front of you. When you look at it from the distance, that's more of the normal viewing uh, distance that the viewer is going to look at your artwork from. All right, so you see that I basically was adding the white, that highlight value. Again, just observe where I placed it and then kind of the direction that I'm going as I blend it into that base color. And we're going to build on this skill as we go to each other section um, for the skin tone. And like I said earlier, you could paint this painting again in a year from now, in a couple months from now, and you'll be more comfortable. It'll be a little bit of a different turnout. So painting is not about perfection, but just improving your skills. All right, so we got that base on there for the fingers and then going back with that raw sienna. Again, just observe where I'm placing it. And as we work in these small spaces, um, we are a lot more controlled with our brush strokes. So if you're one of my first time painters, um, you might find some frustration in this just because you haven't developed the muscle memory for handling the brush. So I do recommend that you try some of the more of the first time painter videos. And as you get more comfortable, then just kind of step up to um, some more of these controlled dexterity paintings. And this is just part of your creative journey, your creative path. So again, you do not have to add every single detail. We're just kind of getting a slight illusion of depth. We are not photorealistic here. This is not perfect. Um, but when you're done and you look at it from the distance, you're going to be like, hey, not bad. So as you get more and more into your creative outlets, um, your skills will improve. And then if you want to go more into photorealism, I definitely recommend uh, you going in that direction. All right. So going back to that medium, that light raw sienna, getting the face on there, avoiding the lips, getting the neck on there. And then we'll go back with the pointy brush and the raw sienna to get some of the shading. And as you're working on the face, um, a lot of my students relate it to contouring with makeup, so feel free to do that um, on your painting. Get your contour lines in there as you would if you're applying your makeup. So kind of just getting those eye sockets, the kind of shading underneath the chin, underneath the hair, and kind of on the edges of where the nose would be. Again, it does not have to be perfect. We're just giving the illusion that we have a face. 
And now grabbing the white, kind of for the top, the bridge of the nose, those cheeks, and a little bit on the forehead, and a bit more on the left-hand side of the face. And then going back and blending it in. And definitely get out of your chair, look at your painting from the distance on this one, adjust anything you need to, because it is easier to do the adjustment while the paint is wet compared to coming back tomorrow and realizing that you want to change something. All right, so we're moving into the lips, so that light pink. And again, you can give her any color lipstick that you want. Um, I just went with the light pink, and then we'll go with a little bit of a darker pink um, or that direct red for the line in between. And then pulling, wiping that brush off, and then pulling a little bit of that red into the upper lip. And then we'll put a little bit of a white highlight on the bottom lip. So usually that top top lip is a little darker and the bottom lip is a little lighter because that's what's catching um, the light. All right. Oh, and I forgot about that um, that second arm, that second elbow. So doing the same thing, going back to that base light raw sienna. We'll put the darker raw sienna on and then some white. You guys are doing a great job. Do not feel like you have to paint as fast as I'm painting in this video. It is sped up and time lapsed. Um, so take it, pause the video as needed, and take it at your pace. I am thrilled with the amount of people that are painting on a bit more of a regular basis, and many of you who have just started painting. Keep it up. All right, so moving into the black, we're going to give her some eyebrows. Uh, we're going to fill in her hair, and then we will actually go through and outline everything. And the outline... Um, just kind of gives it a bit more of a pop art feel, a bit of a cartoon feel. If you do not want to do the outlines, you do not have to. Same with anything in art. If you don't feel like doing it, don't do it. This is your creative expression. And as you are working in these smaller spaces, again, remember to exhale as you touch the brush to the canvas, and that's going to make it a lot easier for you. All right, so a good place to pause the video before you move into the outlines, take your progress photo, and I do recommend fully letting the painting dry. Oh, I forgot about the white dots on the bandana. So put those white dots in there first, and they're literally just dots on the bandana of that pure white. You don't really have to do any shading on this one. And then we'll do the black outlines. <laughs> All right, so again, um, it does help to have your paint fully dry by the time you do the outline, so that way you don't get any wet paint to contaminate it, um, and it does make it easier. If this is um, a bit of a struggle for you and too much, you can fully let your paint dry, and then you can do the outline with a Sharpie marker if you want. So again, as you're working on these outlines, mind the pressure of your brush. Light pressure will be smaller lines. A little more pressure will be wider lines. And for my beginner painters, if you have a variety of widths of line, that's okay. That's where you're at for this particular painting. You guys are doing great. All right, and I tell all my students, please try to find a regular outlet <clears throat> for yourself for creativity if you find that maybe you don't like painting that much, please try other mediums, try colored pencils, try watercolors, um, try other creative outlets, music, dance, theater. But as this world continues to evolve and do what it does, um, creativity of any form are great stress relievers and great outlets for human beings. So please find your outlets that make you happy, that make you forget about the world for a little bit, um, and help keep you balanced as you move through your life. I cannot stress that enough. All right, so looking good. We'll be moving into the message um, in a moment. And again, I recommend that you make this your own. Um, Put your own message on there. If you're giving this as a gift, write your own message. And I'll be doing it with a yellow and white paint and kind of using the width of it, um, the width of the middle flat brush. 
but feel free, you can change the color, you can do whatever you want. I did take a pencil and kind of draw the block letter on there to make sure that I had everything spaced correctly. So do any prep work that you might need. Um, if you've got paint markers or a silver Sharpie marker or a white Sharpie marker, um, that does make it kind of easier to do it than sometimes using the brush. Uh, if you've gotten into calligraphy and you've got a paint marker, feel free to do your calligraphy work up here. Um, and then send me pictures of what you guys paint. I really enjoy seeing um, what you guys create at home and the fact that you actually watch the videos and go through the process. <laughs> so I'm proud of you guys so much for getting creative um, and all your support on this channel. I really do appreciate it. So thanks so much for hanging out and painting with me. Please don't wait too long to paint your next one. And until next time, cheers. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the process of painting and I hope you really like how your paintings turned out. I'm really proud of you for going through the process. As you're uploading these to social media, please tag me at or hashtag paintwithlovejoy and definitely email me your photos, paintwithlovejoy at gmail.com. Um, share this with your community. When I post your photos on social media, it encourages so many other people that are scared to paint it encourages them to give it a try. So you are really important in helping other people uh, tap into their own creativity. So please share with your community. Um, with that being said, again, when you wanna take your skills to the next level, check out my online school, paintwithlovejoy.com uh, and check out that Paint Your Pet course. Because when you paint something that you love, you learn more, you put a little more energy into it and you're pretty much pleased with the results. So give that a try. Um, so I'm really grateful that you took time out of your day to hang out with me and get creative. Don't wait too long to do your next painting. And I look forward to painting with you in the future. Cheers.